Hey guys, it's Deborah. So I want to talk about something, this article here in front of you. Um, and at the end, make sure, please stay tuned for the end of the video. I'm going to input a video from another channel um, that is pretty amazing with regards to this prophetic. And you probably, you may have seen it, but just in case you haven't, it's amazing. So um, yeah, it says Coast Guard spots Chinese guided missile cruiser off Alaskan Island. I'm sure you guys have seen this. I just wanted to touch base on it and then combine it with this video at the end. Um, so yeah, as you see, the thumbnail is the dragon stands before the woman. And we know that's Revelation 12. Um, I'm not saying America is the woman at all. <laughs> what I'm just saying is it's like interesting I don't even know if that statue is supposed to be a woman. Like, honestly, it looks a little off. But anyway, um, I'm talking about the Statue of Liberty. I don't know what that is. But yeah, basically, it's interesting that it's kind of a play on words because we know the dragon in um, Revelation 12 is um, Satan. And we know the woman is Israel and the child uh, inside we believe interpretation wise and uh, you know it matches with the revelation 12 sign that happened in september 23rd 2017 but we believe the woman is israel um, and the child inside is the church the man child which gets caught up which signifies the rapture of the church and uh the dragon is standing before the woman trying to get the child um, but then it's caught up to the throne um, and then the woman we know she flees in Revelation 12 into the wilderness for three and a half years. I mean, it completely fits. So that's what that is. I mean, people have had other interpretations. I've studied, I've researched, I dug. This is what I completely believe it is. Um, and so I don't believe it's China standing before the States, but the play on words, right? Like the dragon, that's the symbol that the Chinese love. The dragon stands before the woman. And so many people have had dreams it says there will be an increase in dreams and visions in the last days. And so many people have had dreams, not me, but many people who have seen um, Russia and China on American soil in some form around the time of the rapture and tribulation. Uh, you know, there's discrepancies or different, maybe not discrepancies, but different people see things happening at different times in that. But definitely it's around that time many people have had these dreams um, or visions or both of this happening. And you could think, well, how could that happen? But, you know, in World War II, I mean, you know, this first world nation, like, you know, the UK, it was bombed, right? And, and things like that. So like, you know, there can be these, these prosperous countries can see war. It seems like, no, it's impossible. And trust me, I don't want that, but people have seen it. So, um, I guess what I'm saying is it's a play on words for Revelation 12, the dragon standing before the woman, so anyway, um, you have this article, you see things are creeping up. One thing that you can, you know, is that things take longer than expected. A lot of times you're like, you think things are going to be fast, like what happened in Ukraine, the invasion and everything. And, you know, things just take longer. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It's just, they take a lot of times longer, um, than you would expect. It's not like the movies. It's not like a two hour movie. Um, I'm just going to read more into this article. One sec. Anchorage, Alaska, a U.S. Coast Guard ship on routine patrol in the Bering Sea came across a guided missile cruiser from China, officials said Monday, but it turned out the cruiser wasn't alone as it sailed about 86 miles north of Alaska's Kiska Island on September 19th. Two other Chinese naval ships and four Russian naval vessels, including a destroyer, were spotted in single formation, the patrol boat known as Cutter called Kimball Discovered. So a lot of you guys know about this, but I just wanted to touch on it and relate it to the video I'm going to play at the end. It's only, I think it's like three minutes long. So it's just stay for that one. Just trust me. So, um, basically, yeah, it just, it's the play on words with the dragon standing before the woman and something else that I was thinking about, um, just to put my two cents in as a Canadian looking from kind of the outside of the U S um, I think, you know, I know I was put in this, in this, in YouTube, in this time, in this platform, in this community that is mainly American for, you know, such time as this. And, you know, there's not a lot of Canadians on YouTube doing eschatology. I mean, there's probably a decent amount, but in our community, not a ton. And so I just think it's a different, unique point of view that I can give. And I say this because 
I was just having a conversation yesterday with two ladies and they were talking about um, just, well, they were talking about movie stars and singers and stuff that come from Canada and go to the United States, like Sean Mendes. I didn't know he was Canadian, but they were like, Sean Mendes, he's Canadian, blah, blah, blah. And then we were just talking about them going over there and then they started to say the usual thing, um, which I don't know if you guys know, but Canadians like I, where I live, they they really do not like America. Like they really, really don't. And I, it's just, I've noticed it for the last like little while, probably before I started looking into end time. So at least like a decade when I mentioned thinking of like a long, long time ago, um, possibly going over to the States to find a job. This was ages ago or to just, just live there. Um, people were like, what, what are you crazy? Why would you want to live there? Like all this kind of stuff. This is supposed to be the leader of the free world. It's supposed to be the place everyone wants to go. And yet that's the view. I'm bringing this up for a reason. Um, and then my brother, he moved to Australia and everybody's like, oh, it's so amazing. Australia is so great. Like if I ever mention it, they're like, oh, that's so amazing. And, um, even he says like, you can never move to the States. Like that's not somewhere you go. And I'm just wondering as Americans, because listening to my channel, like in my analytics, it's mainly Americans. I love you guys. Like we're all citizens of the kingdom. We're not, oh, I'm American and I'm Canadian. And also it's like, that doesn't matter. It's we're citizens of the kingdom. We're, you know, going to inherit the earth and it's not about this patriotism, but I just wanted to, you know, see how you guys feel about this because do you guys know how Canadians, not all Canadians, obviously there's exceptions to the rules, but most Canadians I meet really do not like America. I, I don't, I mean, I never understood it, but now I get it fits prophecy and I'll explain why. And I'm just wondering, do you guys know that? Like all my American friends that I've made from YouTube, um, they love Canada and they love Canadians, everyone I know. And here, whenever I mention, you know, the States, everybody is like, like gets, I won't say enraged, but they're like, it's just horrible there. And everything. I'm just like, what, what is this? And I will tell you, you know what it seems like to me? Let me tell you. And I'm not trying to like make anybody feel bad. I mean, who really cares? This whole thing is going to go down the ship. It's a sinking ship. So all this whole place. So, uh, you know, you know, the only hope is the millennial reign, but I'm just saying this because it fits. So we're seeing, you know, America's enemies surround them. And I started thinking about um, the the woman who rides the beast, the prostitute who rides the beast. And she is like, oh, I'm no widow. No one can touch me, all this stuff. And then who turns on her? The 10 kings turn on her. So she's riding the beast system. She's at the top of the beast system. And then they all turn on her. Right now you're seeing enemies of America. So, you know, Russia and China, they're enemies. But think about it. Canada's an ally. So why? But... I feel like they would just turn on America in a minute, honestly, like just the animosity. And obviously it's not the individual people. It's that they dislike. Sometimes it is, but it's, it's more, you know, it's the governments, it's the systems, but it's like, it's all being set up. I mean, it is being set up prophetically for, for America to be turned on. And, and it fits with revelation, um, with, uh, sorry. Yeah. Revelation 17, I believe it is where the woman's rides the beast and 10 kings turn on her. Now think about this. Daniel's statue. I'm going on a rabbit trail here. But J Daniel's statue. The vision that he saw. You know the different uh, dominating kingdoms. Like Babylon. And Medo-Persia. And um, the, Gre the Grecian Empire. And all this stuff. They all had their end. Obviously they got an end. And then, um, then you have the Roman Empire. And if you notice. It never really went away. Because the Roman Empire is the iron of the feet. I think it's the legs and the feet. It's definitely the feet. And it mixes into the 10 toes, which is the iron and clay. So where are we? We're going, we're at the feet go and Rome it never, it just broke up. It just, it just blended. So, um, it, it goes into the toes and how many toes, 10 toes, how many Kings or leaders or whatever turn on the woman who rides the beast 10. And who is the one who sits atop and says, I'm no widow. I don't need anything. And, and intoxicates or seduces the whole world with her sorcery. Okay. You know, is K-pop seducing the whole world with its sorcery? You know, South Korea, K-pop a little, but not the whole world <laughs> is Bollywood doing it. No. And even though we produced Sean Mendes, 
who is seducing, seducing the world with his sorcery, his sorcery, um, his, yeah, singing and all his stuff. And, uh, I don't know him that well, but I've heard one of his songs and it is very seducing. Like it is the kind of thing where, and you know, we're Canada produced it, but he goes over, you have to go over to America to make that seduction work for everyone. Like you have to have it produced there. You, you can't really stay here. I mean, I say here, sorry, in Canada and do that. So anyway, it all fits. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not typically listening to secular music. I just was bringing this up because these women were talking about Sean Mendes. Anyways, if you don't know who he is, don't worry. You don't need to know. Um, but just know he's seducing the world. So what else? Yeah. I was just saying it really fits with the America's enemies coming, surrounding them, circling, you know, kind of like a prowling lion kind of looking around. Um, and <clears throat> we know that's how mystery Babylon eventually goes down is the ships from afar are sitting out there watching her burn. But, um, I'm just talking about the woman who rides the beast right now, who seduces everybody. And, um, you can interpret that stuff however you want. I'm just saying it really is interesting that the 10 Kings turn on her. They like, Oh, we love you. You're the top. You're riding the beast system. And then all of a sudden, boom, they turn on her and the 10 toes, it all matches. And I'm just saying as a Canadian, I can see being part of that, that group, like that, not me, <laughs> like the leaders of our country being part of the 10 leaders who turn on the prostitute on the beast. So I hope that made sense. It's just weird to me to see that kind of disdain and such a disdain. Like literally, I just heard it yesterday. I'm like, what is this? But it's spiritual. It has to be this way because the tables are turning slowly. The statue is coming to pass and the vision of Daniel with the beast, it's all coming to pass. Like it has to be this way. This kingdom has to be over so that the one world kingdom can come to play. Remember, there's the 10 kings, but they're ruled by one person. You can't have a leader of the free world except for one man. And then that kingdom ends with the rock hitting the statue, Daniel saw, you know, crumbling the whole thing to the ground, all of the, you know, starting with Babylon all the way down to the toes, that has to be crumbled and move into um, the millennial reign. So I know you guys know that. I just, this was all interesting to me. Um, so I just wanted to um, touch on the fact that this is sighted in Alaska. You know, they're seeing these ships and obviously we know what the war and all the thing, the subscription, um, conscription, not subscription, conscription with Russia. Sorry. Um, all this stuff's not funny. It's just, it's a nightmare, but we know that's a thing. And, and we have so many people having dreams where they saw kind of like the, the end begins with an invasion in the United States and stuff like that. Now I just saw just real quick. Sorry. I just saw a video, um, of another channel. He, it's a smaller channel, but he's new, just uh, sharing his faith. And it's a guy who literally was like doing all the crimes that you could think of last year and is now a believer in Christ and everything. Really amazing story. But anyway, he was just saying that he believes God gave a message showing how these troops are going to get into the States. And he said, some of them come through Canada. So I'm like, Oh, great. <laughs> I'm not saying any of this to scare anybody or to be like, whatever. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone on the channel is kind of like up to date with all of this. And it's not about patriotism at this point. Like I said, the whole thing's going down, um, rendering in fire eventually. So it doesn't really matter where you are. What matters is obviously that you are in Christ, that you believe the whole story that Jesus died and rose again, and he's seated by the father and he's waiting for us and he's going to come get us. And just the gospel message. Um, if you believe that you will be saved you can avoid the whole seven years. So that's the key. Um, even if you end up staying, you can have eternity in peace, happiness, all the desires, everything you've ever had completely met for eternity and be with the creator of the world forever and have brothers, and sisters, a family, everybody forever. And, and then you can reign actually on the earth. So that's the amazing part. So if you know, it's about, hey, I want to be in the place that's winning. I want to be on the winning team. <laughs> then, yes, at first, it doesn't seem like it's the winning team, but kind of like, you know, those Rocky movies, Rocky Balboa, those movies. Like, yeah, it doesn't seem like he's always losing. He always is like getting pummeled until the end. And then he's like, yeah, I don't think so. And then he wins. So that's really where we're at. So if you want to be on the winning team, 
hop on board. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, that story that the guy said I was talking, that I saw the video and he was just saying he saw a map of which countries were going to be invaded. No, which states, sorry, which states. He feels Lord showed him which states were going to be invaded. And he feels like um, he was shown that they would come through Canada and I, I think Mexico. I'm not sure, but like these open borders, like that's how they're getting in or something. So that was pretty crazy, but it kind of goes in line. I guess there's just a lot here. Um, I think the Lord is preparing people possibly for maybe just around the rapture before the, the, the pre-trib rapture for this invasion, for these things to happen and that people won't be too super shocked. I mean, obviously we'll be in shock, but just that they'll know, okay, you know, this might happen just around that time. And if something starts to happen, you know, just know in your heart, okay, we're leaving soon. Like it's very soon. Um, or it will happen simultaneously. Now, if there's nukes involved, I think it would be simultaneous, but we don't know exactly how it's going to happen. So anyway, I just wanted to touch on all that. Um, that was longer than I thought I was going to talk. So if you're interested, stay tuned for this three minute video that I've attached here. Um, about what's happening in Russia currently and prophetic things matching up with that and something that I was pretty amazed. I mean, it's prophecy from way back. So um, you may have already seen it. If you did, no worries. If you can just end here. If you haven't seen it, just, you know, watch. It's like three minutes. And I just want to let you guys know I am reading the comments. I'm still deciding how I'm going about that. Like, I'm reading the comments. So if you said something, please know I'm reading. And thank you for the love. I really do appreciate it. I just... The one balance in this whole thing I think I'm trying to make is that I'm reading the comments and unless absolutely necessary, then I'll reply or something like if it's a question that really needs to be answered or something like that. Definitely. Um, but just know that I'm thankful for the love. I am reading the comments. Um, and yeah, I just, I'm thinking that's how I'll just kind of relieve some of the amount of work and stress and pressure is by just reading the comments rather than replying to everything. Like I was at the point before replying ever, to every single thing, putting hearts on every single thing. And that can take a really long time. So yeah, just know I am reading them. Um, and again, I am not showing any like distaste to any person or country or whatever. I don't sit here thinking, think, thinking that Canada is something when we have some of the most liberal evil laws you could ever dream of. When America's like, oh, we just passed this horrible law to do this horrible thing. You know, it's not funny. Horrible laws to do horrible things. I'm like, yeah, we've been doing that for years. Like all... Um, pretty much anything you guys try to get past or they try the evil people try to get past that's really bad in law in the law in the states like the worst of the worst we have already been doing and nobody says a peep about it because we're super liberal um so now i'm going to play the video three minutes i'm glad you made it this far <laughs> so i guess that's it i will definitely keep coming back as long as the Lord allows me to um, just keep on keeping on till the day is done till he comes back so yeah anyway I hope you enjoyed the video and found this interesting and I will talk to you again soon and until next time God bless and Shalom and so I uttered these words oh God if this is not happening then what will be the sign of it happening and of its time? That was my word standing there. As I spoke those words, these words were spoken very clearly back to me. December the 14th, 1986. When Russia opens her gates and lets the masses go, the free world will occupy themselves with transporting, housing, and caring for the masses, will begin to let their weapons down, and will cry, Peace and safety and that's when it will happen when russia opens her gates and lets the masses go that's when it will happen when russia opens her gates and lets the masses go that's when it will happen many russians are scrambling meantime to get out of Russia. Tickets on flights to visa-free countries are skyrocketing and selling out fast. You'll see this one. This is the one that arrived in Belgrade and on the ground it's no different. Cars piling up. Look at those checkpoints along several of Russia's land borders, many of them mired in standstill traffic. Now refusing the draft in Russia is now punishable up to 15 years in jail. This is the border with Georgia. Reports of an 8-kilometer queue and a 12-hour crossing. And this is the line into Finland. 
The defense ministry said Russia would initially deploy some 300,000 reservists. Flights out of Russia were immediately sold out in an apparent exodus. The European Commission says more than half a million Russians have left the country since the invasion began in February. This was the border with Georgia on Wednesday. Finland has also seen a spike in arrivals. But the only remaining direct flights to European cities are to Istanbul and Belgrade. They're sold out. Since Vladimir Putin announced the partial mobilization of 300,000 troops on Wednesday, the price of flights out of Moscow has tripled. Turkish Airlines flights to Istanbul are all booked out. This morning, inside Vladimir Putin's Russia, traffic is jammed at border crossings and crowds are packed at airports. One-way tickets selling out fast. With extraordinary scenes of Russians fleeing, lined up at the border for hours after Vladimir Putin's order to call up more troops. Facing heavy losses in Ukraine, President Putin announced a partial military mobilization. The Russian president is looking for 300,000 reserve troops to fight his war. When Russia opens her gates and lets the masses go, that's when it will happen.